IBAT is a not for profit public charitable trust. Over a period of time, we have grown into a think tank that aims to provide a platform for policymakers, technologists, academicians, and industry leaders. So we get together, and what's the purpose? We debate, we discuss, and we share our views. While doing that, we cover a broad range of topics like contemporary management, technical issues, geopolitical issues, and also economic issues. So for today, I would like to invite Mr. Rajaram Shetty, who is a chartered accountant for the last four decades. I would like to invite him here and uh, we will listen to him and uh, get his views on how this interesting group of 12 people have got together and how we will be using this think tank to share our ideas. We got here people of eminence who have in their own way built their future. Once Abraham Lincoln said, you can predict your future provided you create it. So these people have created and their journey of life actually should be visualized by all people, especially younger generation. You are Welcome here. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Mr. Subhash Madhukar Kamath. There is a saying, when stability becomes a habit, maturity and clarity follow. Mr. Kamath is all about stability and solidity. Strong businesses that create jobs and cater to the needs of the society, they are the building blocks of whatever good there is in a community or a, or a city or a state and thereby a country. Mr. Kamath has contributed to the development and growth of our beautiful city with not just one, but two solid and stable businesses under a common brand name. Mr. Kamath joined his father's jewelry business, Abran Jewelers, in 1987. And it's been a long journey from that day till today that he is now the managing director of Abran Jewelers Private Limited that has 15 branches in coastal Karnataka, Malnadu and Panji Goa to him now being the CEO and director of Abran Motors Private Limited as well. It's an authorized dealer for Maruti, Suzuki and Nexa vehicles, spare parts and service centers for the entire district of Udupi. You never lose in business, you either win or you learn. Let's listen to Mr. Subhash Madhukar Kamath and learn what he is got to understand from his entrepreneurial journey and what he got to teach to the next generation. Mr. Kamath. Today, I talk about the journey of Abran. Well, we go back to 1930s. Our grandfather was into tobacco business. So he used to frequent Malnad areas for procurement of raw material and such. During these frequent visits, the, peop you know, the people there requested him to get some jewellery done from, from Udupi. Since Udupi and Mangalore, a part of South Kerala, was you know, very creative in manufacturing jewellery. So this was, a, this was his routine. Whenever he used to visit, he used to get jewellery done for them. In for five years' time, he thought, well, why not I start the same business? So in 1935, he started a business in Udupi under the brand name New Jewellery Mart. Well, his USP those days was, I should give quality jewellery to my customers. And he earned a name for this. Unfortunately, in 1962, after the Indo-China War, there was a defense act. And uh, gold was supposed to be a luxury item. And he had to close down. A part of his gold also was seized at that time. Uh, my father and my uncle, they migrated to Bangalore to so set up an industry. Well, again, 1979, uh, my father said, no, I'll come back to this jewelry business. So th that's how in 1979, Abaran started. So my father's, again, USP was give quality jewelry, give good designs of ready-made jewelry also, and of course, a customer service. He came up with a 600 square foot um, showroom with the maple wood interiors. It was quite, quite good on the, you know, the, those days. I was in the ninth standard those days. 
when, during 1979. Well, it, it was a very slow progress because people were not accepting ready-made jewellery. Since ready-made jewellery, those in you know in, during those times, people were thinking it used to come from from other parts of the country or mainly from Coimbatore and these places. So the purity might not be good, but we convinced our customers to say that this jewellery were manufactured in-house. We had a small workshop and he developed it that way. 1987, I finished my engineering and I joined this business. I had an engineering degree, I didn't know how do I prove myself in this business. Anyway, I went through all the processes, this, whatever our dad had established took up the responsibility of setting one sh sh showroom at uh, Shimoga in 91. So after 91 again, you know, sales is a different, totally, it's a different issue. Sales is done by, I, I cannot be doing sales. We need people to do sales, if you have to grow with me. So then that way I put up my, I applied my mind on setting up a, a production center. So that, that is where I applied my mind to bring in more machineries which could help our artisans for a better productivity. So set up basic machineries like sheet drawing, wire drawing and bangle cutting machines and all this. But you know, the technology, we wanted technology, no internet those days. So, so I had to visit a lot of the trade shows where I could, I could meet people, to talk to the people from the industry and gain some information through them. So as years passed, I mean, in the, somewhere in uh, 95, as Mr. Manoj Shetty also mentioned, computerization happened at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. So I thought, let us set up all the processes and computerize it, because a lot of manual work was there. So we set up computers, we had a software engineer and we had a software done too. So that's the first part in computerization. If you all remember, you know, the purity of gold was always checked by the touchstone. We had a stone, it's called a touchstone method, which was not very accurate. Either, either you gain or you lose, but basically you lose more. Let me be frank on this. And I always had in my mind, if at all I have to grow, if I have to put up more stores, we need some scientific method where the purity of the gold can be judged. So, in 1997, I found a person who found a company in Germany who said, we have a machine, which was the smallest machine. They were into oil, uh, machines for the oil industry. We went to Germany, got myself trained in the, into this, and so set up the first uh, X-ray fluorescence machine here in India. So, that is how we could improve on our, you know, give more transparency to our customers regarding the purity. Uh, similarly, you know, we, we used to get uh, old jewellery in exchange for new jewellery. Now this old jewellery has to be refined in a proper method. And there was no organized sector at all in this. So, excuse me. I was also making some research and then found a machine from, from UK where refining could be done. So today we have a state-of-art uh, refining machine where the impure gold can be purified into pure gold and then again alloyed. So all these steps I could, ma I could manage to do in this, in this business. You know. In 1999 we had our website ready. We were too early, but website was ready in 1999. And believe me, we couldn't even do one sale for the next 15 years. Let me be frank on this. But yes, we were website ready. People were talking about Y2K, you know, and internet ready and all that. So, but still we said, let, let's have a website. But internet uses also very less those days. But still I said, let me be ready for the future. In 2001, we got into uh, automobile business. Now, how we got into automobile business? My father had a workshop somewhere in 1960s, 62 or so just after the closure of the jewelry store but it was not successful so somebody must have you know hurt his sentiments that uh, he was not successful so he said i need to get a i need to do a dealership that's how we got into this maruti business maruti business we got into co corporate culture all these years up to 2000 
jewelry was in a very unorganized sector, very unorganized. I mean, that, that, was, a, that was a change after two, 2000, a lot of things, you know, got in place. So, 2001, as we got in Mamaruti, I got exposed to the corporate culture, but mainly, I would say, it was manpower management and uh, dead stock management, which we have never think, given a thought to about this. So, manpower management, like when we used to recruit people, it was a slow process of training them. We used to give them a year's time to get trained. You know, there was no proper curriculum for this. They got trained practically. But after I got into this, I understood a sales executive was trained within the, th within the three months by proper training methods. That is how I applied my mind in for our jewelry business too. We set up our own curriculum and we, even today within th three months of people are trained to get into this. The dead stock management is another thing where you know earlier our, our thinking was you have some gold with you, if it doesn't tell then it's okay. Because you know the valuation increases but as I realized the valuation will never increase. The interest cost goes up and you end up with a lot of dead, dead, dead stock. So, we have a change of methods now. So, 2000, in the year 2000 also, we shifted from the conventional purity to 916 purity. Now, what does this mean? But before 2000, Indian standards was if you could see, if, if I am sure people could are aware, there was a purity mark called 22 bar 20. It means 22 is a skin purity and 20, 22 carat is a skin purity, 20 carat is the melting purity. This is what we used to sell. But we used to, we used to give 22 bar 21, but the seal was 20 actually. But then you said, let us shift to 916. 916 is the worldwide standards for gold purity. We contemplated ourselves. If I convert to 916, will I lose business? Then we came to a conclusion. Even if you lose business by 10, 20 percent, that's okay. But start giving good purity to your customers. This was what we had in mind. But we are successful in this. So the business never came down. We grew from there. In 2006, we set up our showroom at Mangalore. As years, years went by, in the 2013, we came up with the store at uh, Kundapur and in uh, Karkala. In the next couple of years, this was again a Maruti concept. You have s a satellite workshops or satellite showrooms attached to the main showroom. So we thought, let's open a sh st small store at uh, uh, Bahindur and Hebri, which was attached to Kundapur and Karkala which could help. Now, this is convenience for the customer. So, customer need not travel all the way to Karkala or Kudap, then they can also go there. In, um, in the year 2015, now we, we you know, we consume a lot of, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the jewelry boxes, the packing material. And, then, you know, the, there was a, a call from the Prime Minister of India, um, um, you know, it's a make in India concept. So I thought, why not make in Udupi? So we, we started a unit by manufacturing jewelry boxes, employing to 25 ladies, still it's running. All jewelry boxes and the bags is being manufactured here today. So this is how we try to, you know, it's an ancillary unit what, what we set up, set up here. In, uh, yeah, then, then we came into, you know, the demonetization and the GST was introduced the business was affected, a tune of about 30 percent at least. We took this as an opportunity. Now we have to grow closer to the customers. So that is when we came up with eight showrooms in the next two years. So that my business will never come down. So we're trying to maintain the same business. I think it was a successful model for us. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the GST introduction and the demonetization was an opportunity for us and it was successful also. Then came the pandemic. So that's, you know, in the pandemic, yes. Ours is an employee-driven business, as Dr. Sandeep Pene was mentioning. So it is an employee-driven business. So we said we should pay off all, all, the, all the remuneration, whatever an employee is. So we have given everything right from their bonuses to incentives to increments and everything. So that since, you know, they are part of the company. 
so that is after after the demonetization yes to today yet we are yet to come back to pre covid levels we are at around 80% but we are st still happy no complaints the whole world the whole world is affected by this so in a nutshell today we have we have, as you say 15 stores at 15 places so seven seven uh, car showrooms seven workshops one body repair workshops 1300 people employed 250 goldsmiths 70% so of our power requirements is through green energy and yes i attribute this success to our grandfather because we created a name then and to our, our father too who has who had the entrepreneurial skills and me and my brother, we have you know managed this business, and the fourth generation has fourth generation has just joined in now. So anyway, the thanks to IBAT, the thanks to uh, Rajaram Chetty, and thanks to this August audience for a patient hearing. Thank you. Thank you, dear friends, for watching this episode of iTalk. iTalk is an event that was brought to you by IBAT, the think tank, in association with U Channel. This edition of iTalk try to bring in 12 thinkers, doers, and idea generators from diverse fields on a single platform. I hope you will watch and listen to our love and other speakers too and enjoy it. If you have liked our program, please subscribe to our channel by clicking on subscribe button. Thank you. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, dear friends.